Okay, fine. Perfect. Yeah, sorry for the delay, everyone. Good morning. I am a Anorotukumabosis from the University of Nigeria, Osaka, and uh, the I'm a PhD student, possibly my final year. So here yeah, are my co-authors, and uh, I have also uh, one of the co-authors here sharing for me, Professor Andy from the School of Remote Sensing and Joe Mac uh, Joe Mac Mac's Engineering, Nigerian University. So maybe you skip. Thanks. Next, yeah, thanks. So the highlights I am to make the introduction, literature review, the data method, resource and conclusion. Okay. So first uh, is the, this drawing here, the typical drawing that shows uh, the uh, the left panel shows the sun and that of the right shows the earth. So they can see the, the internal structure of the sun showing the inner core, the radiative and then the convention. So most times during the activities of this, uh, the internal dynamo of the sun, most times these uh, particles have been ejected, popularly known as the CME, that is the Corona Max ejection. So the first bullet point here shows the ionosphere, times as the upper region of the Earth's atmosphere that uh, ranges from 60 to 1,000 kilometers and also houses or contains much uh, uh, electron, sufficient electron that do interfere in the propagation of the radio waves. So most times when this SEME try to penetrate the magnetic uh, sector of the Earth, there is always a disturbance causing the geomagnetic storm, uh, called the geomagnetic storm, which usually changes the properties, the electromagnetic properties of uh, the, uh, uh, the Earth. And we have the term that like I have explained before, the geomagnetic storm. So during this section, we have the magnetic latitude, where we have the low latitude, the mid latitude, and the high latitude. And during this storm, these uh, latitudes do receive a uh, different disturbances of the electron content. So first slide. So here shows the typical drawing of what is electron content, that is the tech. Popular in math tech, TEC. So here you have the X tech, which is the line integral of uh, the electron site. Uh, here you can see the satellite. I'm sorry, I can't maybe share, show the uh, my mouse, maybe showing the uh, what I am. Yeah, fine. So yes, you can see the satellite. So the red, that red stick line there, which measures that is the X tech when it's measured in a uh, yeah. That is that, yes, yeah, perfect. So, measures when it is measured uh, in, in diagonal, that is, we talk about the X tech and then the columnar, which is the blue line tick, line, perfect, yeah, shows the V tech. So, most basically, the, you can see the beneath there shows the V tech equation because the satellites do measures in X tech, that is the slant tech. And also, in getting the slant tech, we need a thin shear model, that is the red, uh, the red. Uh, 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 right up there, that is the thing share model that is used by, uh, uh, referenced by Langley and Manuka in order to convert the VS tech to the VTEC. So here our, our much concern is shows that the Africa low latitude ionosphere during this storm is presented at of that of uh, the August 27, 2021 storm with DST minima minus 82 nano Tesla. And basically, it occurred in this 25 uh, solar cycle ascending. Next slide. So, I will skip most of the literature, but, but my, my major concern here shows the red line, the red, red uh, uh, ink. That is that of the Asphyxia, that 2020, and most of these recent literature that have reported the efficient investigation of TEC anomalies during storm recovery phase. And then since the ionosphere response, like I said before, that during the disturbances, the sector, that is the magnetic latitude, do receive different amount of electron during the disturbances. So Africa mid, basically, and the low latitude have received less attention. So the track of TEC variation during the initial and recovery, because most basically literature, they are much consigned on the uh, main phase. There is a, the, the, the initial, that is the sum uh, depict. We have the initial, the main, and then the recovery phase. So basically the recovery phases of the storm in the African sector lacks. So therefore the results presented in this presentation, we also try to bridge the knowledge gap. 
Next slide. Yeah, so the data and method, we show here the GNS data from the Tronet. The Tronet is a GNS station that is managed here in my country, Africa, by the Surveyor General of the Federation. So it is a grand base GNS receiver located in three states, yeah, in four states rather, but I will explain maybe further what we used in three state stations because one station had uh, some problems in the quietest days that we selected, there was no data, so we had to skip. So the step from this network also measured the TEC in STEC rather in 30 seconds cadence. And then during the download, we had to write a MATLAB script to convert the uh, 30 seconds STEC into the into one hour and our VTEC. And also we converted using GPS tech application software. And then yeah, we can see the stations there beneath. That is a typical diagram. I made this diagram. It's quite different from the uh, the station uh, diagram that is you can see online. So I had to make my own diagram showing basically the points of the uh, selected station. So you can see the CB, CBCR, the magnetic latitude minus 4.29, that of the ABFC minus 1.51 under the LGLA. This is Calabar, that is the state located. The first one, the second one is in Abuja. And then the third one is in Lagos State and yeah, located in Nigeria, minus 3.03, okay. So in order to also take uh, the characterize the uh, Africa, that is the Nigerian latitude, we had to also look at the space weather indices. And that's one of the major reasons of converting the air stack of 30 seconds into hour, so that you can have a very smooth analysis with other space uh, weather indices, like that of the IMF, you see the IAEF, uh, EY, the solar wind plasma speed, the KP indexes, and then the IE, AE and AL, and then the F10, we got that from the OmniWeb website that of the NASA in order to know the ionosphere, Africa ionosphere during this stop. Then the red line, the red in there shows the method we use. We use the AroTech, that is the relative TEC, where we calculated it's using 10 quiet days within average sliding window that is referred by Pancheva and others. So here you can see the, the, uh, the equation in order to get the arrow tech. We have the arrow tech is TEC observed minus TEC uh, median divided by TEC median. So that of the TEC observed is the main storm day, which is the 27th of August. And then that of the TEC median is a sliding of the 10 quietest days that we have selected. So we selected a day after looking at the 27th day and also to have a very clear picture of the recovery, which is our major interest. And then a problem that most basically the space where the uh, uh, community do experience is maybe how to characterize the recovery phase. Here we took a uh, literature from this year, Love, April 2012, and then we characterized our recovery based on the one third, that is the 33.3% as fully recovered. So for that of a uh, DAC minus 82, which is the major storm, we now had minus 27 nanotesla as being considered as the full recovery stage of the storm. Next slide, thanks. So this is the results. In, to characterize Africa, I know said during this storm, that is, I have explained, we selected, we made use of the term quite as this. Basically, that is the method. Some other person might use the 15 days sliding windows, that is the fifth, uh, seven days before the main day, that is the storm day or the disturbed day, and then seven days after. But here we made use of the quiet days and then we use the sliding window of these quiet days in order to characterize the arrow tech so we as the background text so and the arrow tech of them from the disturbed days that is the deviation from the disturbed days from the slider window and then the dst minima we have stated minus 82 nano tesla in this particular storm day show four hour initial state and then the 12 hour recovery stage as dx at imf at this length until showing the south uh, orientation of the IMF. And then uh, the arrow tech, we had to make a trace shoot showing that at minus or greater, at greater or equal to 
of the arrow tech, we now consider the, 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 maybe the variation of tech because we also have some references that other persons have used at that of the uh, GIMO, it's all 2020. So here you can see the typical drawing showing uh, the space weather indices from the top to bottom, we can see the uh, DHC index and uh, the uh, IEF, IMF and uh, the KP index, and then uh, it shows the typical variation and also the solar plasma wind speed during these particular storm days. Okay. Next slide. So here is the key results of the stations. You can see the first station there is the uh, Abuja station, and that of the second panel is the Calabar station. So you look at, you see maybe during the initial phase of the first uh, uh, panel figure, you during the initial stage, you can see that there is a, yeah, yeah, perfect. You can see that there is a, TEC, that is an enhancement of the TEC DA, and also in the second panel that of the Calabar, this, the percentage, like we stated, that it should be greater than or equal to 30% before we consider that a, a storm uh, that, or uh, the variation of the TEC. So basically during the recovery phases of these two panels, you can see there is a, 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 a deviation that is uh, it's not consistent, most especially there is a TEC uh, enhancement in the second panel that of the Calabar and it, is, it wasn't shown in, uh, uh, in, in a border station. Basically, they are closer to each other. And also you can see maybe the next panel that of this, yeah, this, this station also shows a quite different uh, result. Repeating, yeah, fine. You can see the enhancements there, which is greater than thirty percent. So here you can see, I said that uh, the recovery phase lasted four hours in Calabar. That of it shows two hour depletion and also two hours enhancement. And uh, the three hours enhancement also was shown in the Legon station, but there was no significant variation in the Abuja station. The Abuja station there is at minus one point fifty one station, uh, lat magnetic latitude. So the results here, the key findings shows that the low latitude ionosphere responds uh, at the, the thermospheric expansion, that was the IEE, the equatorial ionospheric anomaly, which also governs basically the low latitude ionosphere of the sector, that is the African sector during this storm. So in conclusion, we say that with the TEC anomalies during the distal periods depends on the latitude that is showing the fountain effects and not basically on the storm uh, enhanced density. And also the African low latitude, like I stated, is being governed by the IEA, where the plasma follow the magnetic field lines during the disturbed day. Because you can see the, uh, the, the, the Abuja, maybe you go back a bit, yeah. Right. Yeah, these two stations, you can see that that of the Calabar and the, the Lagos, which is which has more latitude, there was a uh, 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 more TEC and uh, variation, and that of uh, the uh, uh, Abuja station at minus one, which is at more basically lower latitude. Close, more closer to the equator shows that there was a transport of plasma which is tending towards the more high latitude. So that is why we had to conclude that that of the low latitude ionosphere of the African sector do respond by the equatorial expansion. So thank you very much for listening.